In this video, we're going to cover the basics of recording animation data as it pertains to analog, digital, and basic DMX outputs. We're going to start by looking at the basic recording of digital, analog, and DMX outputs. But first, let's take a look at the project that I've set up for this tutorial, specifically the project settings. I've created a single timeline for this project, which I've just labeled as Tutorial Show 1. For outputs, I've added a Pro Commander AX, which is connected, which we verify by the green network status dot. And then I've added three digital outputs. And then I've added three analog movements, as well as three simple DMX channels here, which we're going to consider this just, a, a, just as dimmer channels, one, two, and three. For our inputs, I have connected a joystick to my laptop, and I've configured the x-axis, the y-axis, and one of the sliders to be used for our analog outputs. I've also configured keyboard A, S, and Z to be used for some of our digital outputs. Okay, let's look at the specifics of the timeline here that I have already created. I've added an audio track and I've dropped in a WAV file to that audio track. I've set the target to our Pro Commander AX. I've also created two channel groups here. The first one I've labeled as Robot Head, and you can see that I've added a couple of the digital and analog tracks to this already and labeled them. I've also created a, another channel group that I've labeled as Demers, and right now I have Light 1 and 2 in there, which I've also set the IOs for. We're going to start by adding another data track, and we're going to assign that to a digital output since that's one of the simplest types of outputs to work with here in ShowForge. However, everything we discuss in this video in regards to recording outputs also applies to analog and DMX tracks with only a few minor differences, which we will cover towards the end of the video. Okay, we're going to label this new track as Mouth, and I'm going to use the keyboard Z input for programming this mouth move. We're going to set the primary output to digital output 3, which we've assigned as our mouth move. One of the most basic ways to lay down some outputs to this uh, newly created uh, digital track would be to put the track into record mode. And since this is assigned to the character's mouth move, we're going to try to lay down some outputs here with the Z key. If you remember, the Z key is what I assigned to this track as an input. And we're going to try to synchronize that with the audio track. So when I hit the space bar, it's going to start the playhead's movement down the timeline, and we'll try to lay down some outputs here. Congratulations, blue team. You win. And then if I hit the space bar again, that stops the record process. You can see by the designation of the envelope background being red that we're still in record mode. I could also immediately return this playhead to the beginning if I wanted to take a second pass. If I knew that first pass really wasn't that good, I could do that by either hitting the option uh, left arrow key to send the playhead back, or I could use the transport keys up here at the top. I'm just going to take another pass at it. Congratulations, blue team. You win. We essentially recorded right over top of our previous outputs, as you can see here. Now, if I wanted to review what I've laid down, I could put this track back into play mode. I could return my playhead to the beginning of the timeline and just hit the space bar. I can review my outputs. You can see the envelope has a green background indicating that the track is indeed in play mode. This is the most basic procedure for recording outputs in ShowForge, but now we're going to look at two other methods which can greatly increase the speed at which you can record and then quickly review what you've just laid down. Let's actually look at the marker approach. I can lay a marker down in the timeline by double clicking in the time scale. And I'm going to put one right here at the beginning of our audio clip. I'm going to put one here at the end as well. Now you can see that when I click on these markers over here in the properties pane, I can actually change the type of marker with this drop down menu. So I'm going to change this to transport. And once I do that, it offers several different options here in the drop down menu for transport type. I'm going to do a loop start for the first marker and a loop end for the second marker. Now essentially, I've created a looping range here that I can quickly use to record and play back my outputs here. So I need to come up here first and turn on 
the looping mode. Once I do that, I'm just going to hit play so you can see what happens. Congratulations, blue team. When blue the win. playhead hits the last marker, it immediately loops back to the first team. and continues to do so until I hit the space bar or I could hit the play stop uh, transport button here at the top to stop that. So what that allows us to do now is if you notice down here, in our digital track that we previously recorded before we use record mode. And if I do that again now, I actually hit the space bar and begin the playhead. You'll see what happens when I get to the end of the range and then it starts over again. So I can lay down points and then you can see when it actually looped around, it kicked the track mode back into play. And so you can very quickly do a record and review process by doing this. We'll take a look at some of the other track mode options here shortly, but just a few more notes about markers. Specifically, record on and off markers can be created to allow for master record range across a track or tracks in the timeline. These are created the same way as the looping markers we previously added and only allow for recording between the record on and off markers when present. Jump markers are also available. These can be very helpful in pinpointing a focus area or areas within the timeline during the recording and playback process. Please refer to the ShowForge manual for additional information regarding markers. Now let's look at the third and probably most efficient option for dealing with recording and playback of outputs, which would be the play and record range mode. Once this is toggled on in the header, uh, green and red bars indicating the play and record ranges respectively will appear just above the timeline, along with their start and end point time fields now being active at the top of the header. So essentially, this is a much more efficient programming approach than what we just covered for markers. The start and end points of both the play and record ranges can be adjusted independently by dragging the end points or typing in specific values in the range time fields or right-clicking on the range time fields and choosing an option from the pop-up menus. Each range can also be very quickly slid along the timeline by grabbing the range bar and dragging, which you can immediately see can be much more efficient than dealing with markers. Let's go ahead and record some outputs utilizing the range fields mode. I'm going to adjust the play and record ranges here. The play range defines my pre and post roll, while the record range defines where I can actually record. I'll now put the track in one of the record modes and drop in some outputs. Congratulations, blue team. You win. You can see the envelope is red indicating a record state, but I can only record outputs within the record range that I've defined. And again, I can quickly slide and adjust these ranges as I move down the timeline programming my show. One other quick note here regarding play and record range mode. There are zoom tools available to the right which will zoom specifically to the play or record ranges as needed. To this point, we've mostly utilized the record track mode for the recording and playback of our outputs. Let's quickly look at the other available track modes along with the additional options for enabling them. Latch mode is very similar to record mode with the only difference being that in a looping situation where the record mode would automatically toggle back to a playback state, the latch mode will remain in a record state until it's manually toggled off. Congratulations. Congratulations. Touch mode allows for jumping into a record state on the fly at any point within the designated record range during playback. So essentially, this track mode starts in a playback state when initiating the playhead, and as soon as the track assigned input is triggered, in this case the Z key, the record state is automatically toggled on and will remain on until stopping the playhead or looping, at which point it will toggle back to a playback state. So touch mode allows for a much easier and more efficient approach to touching up previously recorded outputs. When live track mode is active, any triggering of the assigned track input will trigger outputs at the connected Wiggle hardware at any time. That includes within or outside of record ranges and whether the playhead is playing or not. Any existing envelope outputs to the Wiggle hardware are actually disabled, as are the recording of new outputs, which is designated visually by the envelopes being grayed out. So live track mode offers the ability to rehearse or test outputs in a non-destructive way with or without the playhead running. The off mode is fairly self-explanatory. This is intended to disable all output recording or playback of a track, allowing you to selectively turn off individual tracks at any time during the programming process. For additional information and a comparison chart on the different track modes, please refer to the ShowForge manual. 
Okay, while we're discussing track modes, I'd like to point out there are a few more global or macro ways to switch track modes when dealing with multiple tracks. We've mostly been working at an individual track level up to this point, but there is also a track mode at the group level accessed in the group header. So for this robot head group, if I, for example, had all the tracks mapped to a joystick and would like to program all of them simultaneously, I could set this entire group to, say, latch mode. I could also turn off the entire dimmer group so as not to be a distraction at the animatronic character during programming. To allow for even faster access to all group track mode statuses, there's also a groups pane in the top header which displays the existing groups and allows for quick mode selection here as well. A quick note regarding the master record button and the hierarchy of toggling the recording state. The master record button in the top header will blink when active and takes precedence over all other record range and individual track recording states. For example, toggling off the master record button while having a group of tracks in latch mode and a record range set will actually disable the recording of any outputs, which is indicated here by a cross hatching over any envelopes in a record state and the master record button being grayed out. This is a great feature that can be used, for example, to quickly review tracks that may be in play mode while globally disabling any tracks in record mode which you may not want to record over. The speed control slider allows for adjustment of the timeline playback speed to range from one tenth to two times normal speed. This can be an invaluable tool in situations where, for example, the audio for a mouth movement may be very fast paced. We could slow the timeline down to somewhere around half speed and record this digital mouth movement at a much slower pace, allowing for the output to be more accurately matched to the audio. Congratulations, Blue Team. You win. Single or multiple outputs can be quickly mirrored to a track by selecting the desired track to mirror and then clicking the plus icon next to the mirror outputs in the properties pane. Let's say for example in this project I wanted the head turn to mirror the eye turn outputs for my animatronic figure. I just need to select my eye turns analog track and then select the head turn analog movement from the available outputs here in the drop down menu. Please keep in mind the output you've selected for mirroring from those available in the drop down menu should not be assigned to any track already in the timeline. Otherwise, the outputs from the mirrored assignment will conflict with those in an existing track. Real quickly, I want to mention keyboard shortcuts. As many of the functions we cover do have keyboard shortcuts assigned, which can also be changed as desired. To access the keyboard shortcuts, click on the project settings icon and then the settings tab. Clicking on the keyboard shortcuts brings up the master list. You can see there are shortcuts for things such as master record, toggle on off, zooming, etc. To change a shortcut, click on the current assignment shown as underlined text and then press the new key combination. As mentioned earlier in this video, there are some slight differences when recording analog and DMX outputs versus the digital outputs we've been working with so far, and really the main difference is track default minimum and maximum values, which can be set in the properties pane for a selected track. The default value defines only the track value before the first envelope in a track. Once an envelope of outputs is actually recorded, the last data point in the envelope is held until the next set of outputs is recorded. The minimum and maximum track values allow for clamping of the output values within a track. These values can be adjusted either before recording output data or after. If the values are changed after the data has been recorded, the data will be scaled to meet the maximum and minimum values, and this can be revised or returned to the original values at any time. We've worked exclusively in the edit view in this video for demonstration purposes. There's also live view, which is more of a heads up console approach rather than a timeline, which allows for a more visual at a glance monitoring of track outputs as well as quick switching of track modes. And swapping between views is possible at any time. For more information, please visit us at faq.wiggle.support or email us at support at wigglecontrols.com. For more information about Showforge, email us at info at modalab.com. Thank you.